So in review, there are seven sayings attributed to Jesus from the cross. Matthew and Mark only include one. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Letting humanity throughout the ages know that we worship a God who understands what it is like to feel forsaken. Even if we know and believe and have faith that this is not so, there are times, there are moments when we will find ourselves crying out, why? The Gospel of John and the Gospel of Luke each have three unique sayings. Through John, we hear how Jesus created community. Pour your love that you would pour into Jesus, into one another. When he said, behold your son, behold your mother. A loving relationship was born not by blood, but by faith in Christ. John makes sure that we know that Jesus was human that his death was not an illusion. Jesus from the cross says, I thirst, and they offered him some sour wine to drink. And the traditional sixth, second, sixth, I used to have a lift. Sixth saying of Jesus comes from John. It is finished. And commentators wonder at the word it. What is finished? His mission, the hard part. Last week, I referenced the different understandings that we can find in scripture about what was accomplished through the cross. And we're gonna read about them actually in our affirmation of faith with the, where they are listed out for us. The it we believe is the at one the atonement, how we become at one with God. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. It's not about our sin. Sin does not have the last word. It's about relationship. God longs to walk in the garden that is this earth with us, in relationship with us. God's love has never changed. We, however, can be cruel and clueless and casual about our faith but the cross stops us in our tracks. Yes, God loves us that much. Some traditions emphasize the crucifixion over resurrection. Others emphasize resurrection over crucifixion. And many Christians cruise right past Jesus's life and ministry to, to the, the cross and resurrection, there is abundant life in the way of following Jesus. The way of Jesus offers us abundant life. Which brings us to our final saying from the cross, this time from Luke. And remember, Luke focuses on forgiveness, forgiveness of the cruel and the clueless. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. For the reprobate, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. And now Jesus gives himself into God's hands. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Which makes me think of the phrase, in our living, and this is scriptural, in our living and in our dying, we belong to God. Let me say that again. In our living and in our dying, we belong to God. This changes how we live. We live with courage and hope. I woke this morning with the conviction that I need to tell you the, the story of my experience last Good Friday. Last Good Friday, I was serving a, a different church. We were not gathered in worship. It was the evening and I sat in a sanctuary by myself with my laptop open in front of me and led worship. And just for those many months when I was in the sanctuary by, by myself, you all for, for a while there, you were recording worship. I heard of my clergy friends who were sitting home and eating bagels and drinking coffee on Sunday mornings. I'm like, hey, 
I was in the sanctuary. That's so funny. Why did I say that? Yeah. Yay me, right? <laughs> anyway, when I was by myself, I would picture Jesus sitting with me. And by the way, he's not a front pew sitter. He sits a little farther back, usually on this side. Not all the way in the back, but somewhere close, close to the front. <laughs> And I, you know, and I would look to him and, you know, occasionally I'd get a fist pump, you know, at the end of the service, I get a, eh, not your best, but okay. You know, and on Good Friday, and I know some of you are going to think I'm nuts, but I think God can use, and the Holy Spirit can use our imagination. But on Good Friday, I looked up the, the, the hymn that was playing was, were you there when they crucified my Lord? It was the end of the service. And Jesus, just to mess with me, sat on the other side of the congregation. And I, and I thought, Let, you know, let's check in on Jesus. And he got up and he walked out the back of the sanctuary. And he didn't look back. And I was completely undone. And the song ended and I finished the service and I shut the computer and I wept and I cried out, I can't do this. I cannot do this on my own. The feeling that you want people to have on Good Friday, that desolation for the first time, man, I felt it to my core. I cannot do this. What this life, I don't want to. I don't know if you remember when I first came, I said to you, why do I do what do I, what I do? Because I get, the only reason I get out of bed in the morning is because I know that God is with me and that whatever life throws at me and life can be incredibly cruel, but I'm gonna be okay because God is with me. In our living and in our dying, we belong to God. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. I invite you to take the journey with Christ this week. We're going to let Mark tell the story. On Thursday, we will sit at table with him. On Friday, we will come to the end with him. Worship services will be online and in person at eight o'clock. Easter morning, there will be worship with communion at 7 a.m., a traditional worship service with trumpet, which I'm excited about, at 10 a.m. with an Easter egg hunt in between. It's a long week. We fall exhausted at the end, but hope will be rekindled and covenant renewed. Jesus said, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid as we walk this journey with Christ. Not only this week, but every day until we get to see him face to face. Let it be so. And in Jesus' name. Amen.